Good afternoon and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mike Kelly and on this channel I cover topics on personal finance and personal development. In today's video I'm going to be telling you why I believe Tesla is beating legacy automakers and will continue to beat legacy automakers into the foreseeable future. If that sounds interesting to you, stick around, let's get right into it. Before I get started telling you about all of the reasons why I believe Tesla is beating legacy automakers, I want to say one thing that I think is really important. This channel is a finance channel. All of my opinions on this channel are my own, and you may or may not have a different opinion, especially when it comes to investing. Some people have a higher risk tolerance, some people have a lower risk tolerance, and some people just flat out don't like Tesla, and I totally understand that. But I do think it's really important to hear the other side of the story, the other opinion, someone who has a different point of view, which is why I make these videos and it's completely possible that this does not align with your personal views and your own personal investing strategy. If you're interested in learning a little bit about my investing strategy, I talk about it in this video and it will probably answer a lot of questions you have about why I talk about certain companies and why I don't talk about others. Now that I have all of that other stuff out of the way, let's get right into the topic that today's video is about. Legacy Auto is losing to Tesla. And I don't know if that's going to change in the future. They may end up coming back and really crushing Tesla at their own game. But the way things are now, Tesla is going to end up winning this race. One of the big reasons for that is that Legacy Auto's business model is absolute <laughs> with the dealerships and working with the dealerships to try and sell their vehicles. If Legacy Auto wants to sell EVs, for example, they have to convince all of the dealerships that actually sell their cars to work on selling specifically the EVs. But there's a big problem here. There's a glaring problem here. And that problem is that dealerships, 12% of their revenues come from after sales service and maintenance. An article in Bloomberg echoed this sentiment saying dealerships in turn have little incentive to push electric vehicles Battery powered machines don't offer a fat stream of parts and maintenance revenue, which comprises $12 out of every 100 the typical US car shop collects. Furthermore, electric cars never need antifreeze, a new set of spark plugs, or even an oil change. With all this being said, why would dealerships care about selling EVs? I'm gonna spoil it for you, they don't. So Legacy Auto is left with two decisions. Incentivize dealerships to sell EVs by fiscal means or update their website for online sales and open up their own brick and mortar stores. The issue here is that both of these options are huge capital investments and Tesla is already ahead of them in this. So this is going to put them behind even further from where they are today. Reason number two is that Legacy Auto is a depreciating asset. The second you drive it off of the lot from the dealership, it starts depreciating. And the reason it starts depreciating is because there's no further upgrades or updates made to that vehicle unless you make them yourself, of course. Tesla is very different. Tesla makes software an integral part of all of their products. And the software itself makes the product better over time. So when you purchase a Tesla vehicle, over the period that you own the vehicle will actually improve different things. That could mean a longer range, that could mean a quicker zero to 60 time, or that could be a number of new features in the infotainment system. A good recent example of how Tesla has leveraged their software platform to improve products after purchase would be the new update for the Cheetah Stance. Basically what the Cheetah Stance allows a Tesla owner to do is to have a little bit quicker zero to 60 time by lowering the front suspension and heightening the rear suspension like a Cheetah. If we compare this to Legacy Auto, you're not going to get better gas mileage, you're not going to get a better infotainment experience, and overall, the car's not gonna change much unless you make changes to it yourself or bring it to a dealer that will do it for you. Another reason why I believe that Legacy Auto is going to continue to fall behind Tesla is the fact that they're horizontally integrated versus Tesla's vertical integration. 
What's the difference between vertical integration and horizontal integration? The difference really lies in the number of suppliers of products. Now, Tesla typically relies on itself for all of its products. It does rely on some suppliers for certain components of their vehicles, but if you contrast that with Legacy Auto, who pretty much relies almost 100% outside of the engine and the transmission on outside companies to fulfill very specific part needs, we can see a big difference here. An article written in 2019 by The Driven says, while you might not be aware of it, most legacy car makers don't actually make all the parts of the car. Instead, they buy virtually all of their parts from specialized companies and put them together IKEA style. Tesla is targeting a full integration of almost every part and facet of their product. They not only make the motors, the body, the seats, they build many computer systems that power the various parts of the car and run software they've programmed from scratch. Furthermore, they talk about the charging network that they own, obviously, where legacy auto manufacturers just rely on old-fashioned gas stations to fuel their vehicles. Now, why does this matter today? One reason I can point to right off the top of my head is that the risk of suppliers going out of business during uncertain economic times, like we're having right now. And when a supplier goes out of business, a legacy auto that depends on that supplier for certain and very specific parts to fit into their products, they have to go and search for other suppliers. And that might lead to higher prices, that might lead to less quality and overall less control over the final product. I do wanna say that vertical integration does not necessarily mean it is a recipe for success. Vertical integration is extremely capital intensive. You have to have specialists in every area of the business if you're going to try and compete with suppliers that have been in that business for a very long time. So Tesla has its work cut out for it. And the last thing I wanna talk about in this video is this idea of stranded assets. Now, big legacy automakers have billions and billions of dollars in investments in their engine, all of the different components, the transmission, all of those different parts that make their cars run. And when I was watching an interview with Ron Barron, he said it best. Let's just take a quick listen to this. When you're transferring from an internal combustion engine into a battery, so, so here you're Toyota or you're General Motors or you're Ford, and I come along and I say, hey, listen, we don't need to make those battery, those engines anymore. Let's use my battery. And you've already got these you know, $200 billion invested in, in engines. Are you going to really stop that? So that's one challenge for, for automobile companies. In fact, the automobile manufacturers in Germany were fined by the regulators saying, how come you're not moving faster on, on making electri on electrification? The reason they're not, of course, they're going to obsolete those, all, those, all those investments they have. That's stranded assets. So number one, financially, it's very difficult because they have to invest as much in making electric cars as they're going to have to write off in, in, in motors and where's that money coming from? Pretty interesting, right? Most of today's video, I talked about very positive things about Tesla and less positive things about legacy auto. But what I will say is that Tesla is not out of the woods yet. There is still a lot of work to be done. Tesla needs to reach economies of scale to reduce its prices. Tesla needs to successfully implement all of these new gigafactories. And Tesla needs to do a lot of things to actually gain the trust of the general public and have more people start buying their vehicles. But with all that being said, I do think it is worth investing in if you believe in the company, if you like the products, and this type of kind of technology play. Before I sign off today, I just wanna say thank you guys so much for following my channel, for subscribing to me, for liking the video, all of that stuff. I really appreciate it. It takes a lot of time to make these video and a lot of effort. So I really appreciate you guys for listening and sharing my videos, whatever you do with them. But hopefully you learned something new and got some value from this. And I will talk to you guys next week. Peace.